All right, knowing you're all taking valuable time to attend today's um, panel on Lumen Success Accelerators, I do want to get started. We are recording this session, and so we're recording right now, so you'll certainly get a copy of this recording. Feel free to re-watch that recording um, at your leisure or pass it on to your colleagues who might not be able to attend today's session. Uh, my name is Mike Daly. I'm the Director of Operations for SUNY OER Services. SUNY OER Services um, has proudly partnered with Lumen Learning and uh, uh, Carnegie Mellon's OLI for the past three years to bring um, really content and courseware to SUNY faculty who are looking for uh, new and exciting ways to improve the pedagogy, to improve the technological experience in their classroom, and ultimately to improve student success. Um, I think our focus today moves beyond the first two C's that I kind of mentioned, so content and courseware, and really puts an emphasis on what I hope our panelists will draw out today, which is that the connections that are so important to teaching and learning, and the connections that are possible through the Success Accelerator experience um, that these five uh, faculty members have just completed. Um, I do want to thank our panelists for joining us today. I know they're taking time out of their busy schedules. I want to thank all of you for joining us today, um, for taking time out of your schedules as well. Uh, but I do also want to thank Chris Price and the Center for Professional Development, SUNY Center for Professional Development. Um, they've been excellent partners in this initiative as we've worked with um, Lumen to kind of round out what is already a robust suite of offerings for professional development that SUNY CPD, the Center for Professional Development offers and that our SUNY campus offers. Um, so Chris, I know, I know you're on the line. If you want to say a couple quick words, it would certainly be appreciated. No, thanks, Mike. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, thanks to the panelists for talking to us today. I'm really just looking to forward to hearing what you all have to say about your experience in the accelerator uh, circles uh, and uh, you know, happy to continue to support this initiative. I think that uh, Lumen's done a great job so far uh, supporting this model of faculty professional development, which I think works because it's faculty working with faculty more than anything else. And so to me, that's the best type of faculty professional development. So thanks Mike for hosting, thanks Lumen for uh, doing all the, that you do, and thank you, faculty, for being here. I'm going to turn off my camera so I can have lunch while I listen to you. Thanks, Chris. Um, and as a reminder, everything we talk about today, um, so the two courseware platforms that we're talking about, the online homework manager, our own and Waymaker, as well as the su Success Accelerator experience are at no cost to SUNY campuses and faculty, and that, that's thanks to the support from SUNY, as well as the New York, as well as New York State uh, budget. Um, so certainly no cost incurred by any of you on this call today or your campuses. All right, that's enough for me for a little bit. I'm going to turn it over um, to Julie Curtis uh, for a quick introduction, then she will um, allow the panelists to introduce themselves. We'll then move into a very, very quick um, guided tour of Success Accelerator and then open up the conversation. Um, as the conversation happens or at any time during anything else I just talked about, if you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat for our panelists and we'll roll those into our conversation as well. So Julie. Thank you, Mike. So my name is Julie Curtis. I work with Lumen Learning and I lead up our work with Lumen Circles. This is our uh, set of professional development experiences that uh, provide opportunities for faculty members to connect with each other through virtual communities of practice. So they get to come together, um, explore best practices, explore new um, areas to build out their capabilities as teachers and, and to be able to share amongst each other the things that they're learning and the things that they're doing. Um, our Lumen Circles programs include both things that align with our courseware, and that's what we'll be talking about today with the Success Accelerator program. Um, we also offer Circles experiences that, um, that go beyond you know, whatever set of learning tools you're doing and uh, or you're using um, any particular courseware or more content and give faculty members the opportunity to expand their teaching capabilities in directions such as online teaching, um, active learning, teaching with OER and o open pedagogy um, is a few examples. So we, uh, um, we're excited about the opportunities that we've had this fall to introduce this new set of offerings and see the the impact that it's having on faculty members and hear you know what um, what they're getting from it and so um, so we're we're grateful today to have uh, five faculty members with us who have been through the success accelerator experience and are, live to tell about it and actually are happy about it and so we'll we'll hear a lot more about that um, so why don't I, I'd love to have each of them um, briefly introduce themselves and then we I think we have a, a beginning question for the panel and then we'll go into the guided tour so um, I guess going in order of people I can see on my screen. Sophia, would you like to introduce yourself first? Uh, yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sophia Georgiakaki. I am from Tompkins Corland Community College. 
Department of Mathematics. Uh, we use OM uh, for um, uh, most of our math courses. I use it for college algebra, pre-calculus, calculus two in liberal arts math. But we have faculty that also use it for statistics and uh, developmental mathematics. Thank you, Sophia. Uh, Rachel. Hello, I'm Rachel Rigolino from SUNY New Pulse. I've been teaching in the English department for about 25 years. Um, I'm the head of our developmental um, uh, composition program. I used for the first time this semester uh, the business communication skills for managers as a waymaker tool, but then I also used um, the Candela version of English Composition One. So it's really been interesting. I'm the only one in my department, you know, so far using them. Thank you, Sylvia. Hi, my name is Sylvia Bliss, and I come from SUNY Morrisville. I teach beginning Spanish one and two, and I have been using the Waymaker introductory uh, Spanish one developed by SUNY Onianta, both in the spring and in the fall. And I'm the only Spanish professor on campus, so I'm the only one using it, but I like it a lot. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you. Uh, Jodell. Jodell Raymond, Monroe Community College, uh, the Business Administration and Economics. Um, I've used uh, Waymaker for Business 135. Thank you. And Heather. Hi, uh, my name is Heather Lieb. I'm also from Monroe Community College. Uh, I'm in the ESOL and Transitional Studies Department, and I teach developmental math, basic algebra and pre-algebra. And uh, We've just started using um, Lumen uh, OER for our, our math classes. At, um, I've been teaching at MCC for about 10 years, and uh, the students have really, throughout this semester, have really grabbed onto it. So it's, it's been great for our students. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, so, Mike, I think we have an initial kind of introductory question for the panel. Would you like to pose that? Yeah, definitely. So, I'll start with um, I'll start with Heather. We'll work backwards. Um, so, Heather, in, in one sentence or less, and if you're an English major like me, that could be thousands of words. Um, how would you describe uh, the Lumen Circle Success Accelerator program to your colleagues? That could be either colleagues at MCC or maybe colleagues you know in, in math circles that you travel. Uh, how would I describe it? I would describe it as, um, um, I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I, I would describe it as, um, uh, it was a, an online asynchronous opportunity to one, apply evidence-based teaching practices to my course, uh, using the Loom, the Lumen OHM. And it also, secondly, uh, provided uh, an opportunity for me, for me to share ideas and gain feedback from other, um, they were math teachers in the circle I was in, everyone was a math teacher. So we were really able to focus in on things that Lumen OHM could do for math. So it was really focused and um, I got some really great ideas and feedback shared with my peers. Great, thank you. I'm going to stick at Monroe Community College in Jodell, slightly different department, but um, uh, just describe the Lumen Circle Success Accelerator program to your colleagues at MCC. Um, I'm going to borrow from um, Allison, our uh, facilitator. She used um, a community of practice, the term community of practice. And I embraced that um, where, you know, that, that was okay to, to try something and fail. Um, or to, to retool something. Um, but I found overall that it helped me um, establish where the students were in their learning process and to figure out the best way to help them through that process through different tools um, so that I clarified perhaps my expectations a bit more um, and also um, better able to monitor their progress and actually increase their learning and elevate my teaching at the same time. Great, thanks, Joe Dell. I'm gonna shift away from community colleges briefly and go to Rachel at New Paltz. Rachel, you mentioned in your introduction, you've been teaching um, for a number of years, 25 years, I think you said, 
Um, I'm just wondering with your, your experience, how you would uh, describe this new experience uh, to your colleagues at New Paltz. Uh, yeah, and the, the one thing I would say about the accelerator program and it, thinking about it in one sentence, it was a, a mini weekly retreat. Um, it was time I could spend with myself thinking about what I was doing. And that is, it was great. It was, you know, you knew you had something that was due, but it wasn't overwhelming. I want to point that out to everyone. This is not an overwhelming amount of work at all. And I think you will, as an instructor, you probably will enjoy that one or two hours a week that you spend on it. It was very enjoyable. And Sylvia, staying with our, our four-year colleges at Morrisville, I know you said you were the only Spanish faculty member teaching um, these courses. So other colleagues that you might uh, interact with at Morrisville, how would you describe the experience? One, I mean, I have my sentence written down, but I'll deviate a tiny. Um, it was really valuable to be able to engage with faculty from other campuses, which we don't get much opportunity to do. And I uh, see it as an opportunity to grow together. We use positive inquiry, so people are very focused on what works. Uh, it made me more aware, more mindful, and more effective in my instruction through reflection, feedback, and implementation of these evidence-based teaching practices gives you a menu of resources that uh, showed me things I didn't really would be thinking all the time about where so it enriched my teaching and I loved uh, the connection with other faculty. Thanks, Sylvia. And I appreciate your attention to, to mindfulness. I think it's something we often think of in self-care and far too often not mentioned in professional care. Um, so thanks for bringing that up. Sophia, I've left you for last um, on purpose because you're, the, I think, our, our longest uh, user of OM or Waymaker on the call. Um, so just interested in how you would describe um, the Success Accelerator program um, to your colleagues. Yeah. So, yes. So I have been using OM since uh, before it, its conception, I guess. Um, and as it has evolved to what OM is today, what I really enjoyed with um, so first of all, I enjoyed the opportunity of having an, a, some kind of a platform for professional development uh, at the time of a pandemic, uh, which to me was targeted professional development, uh, especially because, like Heather said, we were in a group of math people using the same platform and at different levels of expertise, but we we're working towards improving our teaching instruction, connection with students, keeping engagement going, success, uh, things like that. So I already wanted to do something for my professional development, but I also found it extremely helpful to work with other faculty. So in my circle, we were approximately 25 faculty members. Most of us surprisingly were from New York. So thank you to SUNY for uh, sponsoring us. It was very nice to see what other colleges in New York are doing. Uh, they, it was great to network and exchange ideas. Uh, there was actually a person who spoke Greek uh, and she's from uh, North Carolina, I believe. So it was nice to just find connections that you are either working in the same uh, you know, state or you have the same goals or you're using the same uh, course material. Uh, it was very nice to exchange ideas and uh, to ask them how they implement uh, something that you have never tried or you tried and you failed, but for them it has worked well. So it, it was a great uh, way to exchange ideas between people who use the same platform and have the same questions. Great. Thanks, Sophia. And thanks, everybody, for sharing uh, your initial insights. We're going to turn it over now uh, or back to Julie, who's going to give us a tour so we can kind of uh, more readily visualize kind of the experience that all our panelists just talked about. Um, and after the brief tour that Julie gives us, we'll have a chance for more in-depth conversation. Thank you, Mike. So I've uh, just tried to share my screen. Is it coming through for everybody? It looks great. Okay, we'll hit the present button so it makes it a little bigger. So thank you, faculty uh, panel, for sharing that that uh, initial insights and kind of wetting the appetite for what Success Accelerator is. 
Um, and, uh, and so for, uh, for people who are new to the experience, I want to take a minute and, and give you a quick tour and some context around that. So Success Accelerator is something that it doesn't replace the basic training and setup that comes after you've decided that you're going to start using Lumen Courseware. Um, it's something that adds on top of that. And um, we heard that word community of practice. So it puts you together with a community of people who are also using your courseware and uh, gives you that opportunity to connect with each other and share and explore together and, and try some new things. Um, it also is about evidence-based teaching. We've heard that from the, the faculty members um, a couple of times. And so I can talk a little bit more about what that is. So as we look at the research around what makes for, what, what are the kinds of things you can do in the classroom to support student success? There of course is a, a large body of research around that. And the, the Lumen Circles work, any of our Lumen Circles experiences, but um, Success Accelerator in particular, are grounded in this framework of evidence-based teaching practices. So these are things that, teaching strategies, things that you can use regardless of discipline, regardless of modality, regardless of what, what tools you're using or what content you're using. These are things that you can do in the classroom that can support your student success. And, um, and so when the faculty panel are talking about evidence-based teaching, um, they're talking about this framework, which is, which is kind of a, a touchstone frame, framework that helps organize the, the content and the activities that you're doing together with your circle members. And so in the Success Accelerator program, you have an opportunity to explore different dimensions of this effective teaching practice framework. And in the framework, there are, so right now there are four dimensions in the framework. We're actually in the process of building out a fifth one um, around inclusivity and, and, uh, and diversity. Um, uh, and that one will be, that will be coming um, probably in the March, April timeframe. So um, uh, kind of a, a coming attraction, I guess. Uh, but uh, at this point, the, the different dimensions of the framework, so there's um, a supportive, uh, su the supportive category. So these are the kinds of things you can do in the classroom to build connections, to build trust, to build a sense of belonging. Um, and in order to do that, you can do things um, like to uh, you know, demonstrate how you care for your students and create the kind of um, sense of caring relationship. There are things you can do to help uh, your students build community amongst each other and connect with each other and and, and uh, build that foundation for the, the, the group connections and sense of belonging that um, can help support, uh, support learning. Um, there, there are other dimensions here too. I won't go through all of these different teaching strategies, but that gives you a flavor of the kinds of things that you get to explore. And then in the Success Accelerator program, we actually give you specific ideas of how you can use your courseware tools, whether it's Ohm or Waymaker, to implement these kinds of teaching strategies. And as you go through the program, you'll have opportunities to focus on each of the different dimensions of the, of the evidence-based teaching framework. So there are things you can do to create your classroom environment that is challenging and motivating in positive ways. Things you can do to create more variation that, that addresses the needs of learners with differing needs and differing um, capabilities. And then also things that you can do to create strong structure and organization to guide students and support them through the learning process. Um, so this is what that framework looks like with the foundation. And then you have opportunities to explore. Um, and so as you come into the, the Success Accelerator experience, it starts with that connection. So becoming a community and being able to meet the members of your community and start to interact. Um, each week you have a different, um, a different prompt or a different activity around exploring these evidence-based teaching practices in the context of the courseware tools that you have and giving you ideas for things that you can do to use those tools more effectively and support your student's success. You have opportunities to then reflect on what you've explored, reflect on what you're planning or what you're trying in your classroom and how it's working and kind of workshop and get feedback with your, from your circle members about that. And then, um, and then you get to see and also reflect on what's the impact that it's making on, on students. So with that, I'm gonna switch over to the actual, the place where all of this happens. So Sophia mentioned that this is a virtual experience, which is really handy during a time of pandemic. 
Um, and so we would we would echo that. We actually see and hear a lot from faculty members saying they appreciate that opportunity to connect with other faculty at a time when there's a lot of a lot of isolation, both professionally and personally. So the Lumen Circles Success Accelerator experience happens in this website, essentially. This is the Lumen Circles website. Um, you log in to the website and it brings you to whatever the activity is that's happening for your circle or your community that week. Um, and so this is essentially what the homepage looks like when you log in. On the left hand side, you see your circle members. The purple dot indicates who your facilitator is. So every uh, Lumen Circles uh, community or every circle has a, an expertly trained facilitator. Um, who is kind of the glue in helping um, create the connections and the, the dialogue and in providing great feedback and guidance to members of that community. But it is a community and it's so it's something that everybody steps up and participates. Everybody has something to learn and everybody has ways to contribute. And so that that participation in the community is an important part of the experience. So what are you doing um, each week? So each week, essentially, you have, uh, there are two things that you're doing. Um, so you're doing, you're reflecting. So you, we're giving you some type of prompt or some type of um, uh, information to explore and then reflect on how do you apply that in your teaching. And then you also have opportunities to collaborate or provide feedback to what other, other members of your community are posting or reflecting. So each week you have one reflection and you are assigned or you're asked to provide feedback to two of the members in your circle. You can provide feedback to everybody if you want to, um, but we you try and get some uh, cross pollination. So everybody is getting feedback um, from at least a couple of people each week. And then of course the facilitator provides feedback um, throughout as well. So what does the reflection look like? So um, this, is, uh, this is an example. Um, so this happens to be in a week when the group is exploring the supportive environment. And so with that, it's kind of reminding people, here's what a supportive classroom environment is like. Here's the kinds of practices that, uh, that create um, those uh, supportive experiences for students. And then there's a set of ideas. So this ha happens to be a Waymaker Success Accelerator experience. Um, for those who use OHM, there's a very similar uh, prompt that has actually exactly the same set of ideas. And then the how do I do this using OHM as opposed to using Waymaker tools. Um, but it provides opportunities for, for you to say, oh, here's something that I, I haven't thought about or I haven't tried yet. So you can go through and look at the ideas and pick one. Uh, what we're encouraging you to do is to pick at least one that you wanna try and, and then reflect on why is it that you're choosing this one? What is it that you anticipate it might add to your students' experience? How will, how will it impact your teaching? And, and as you do that, then also reflecting on what happened and, and why. Um, so this type of reflection is pretty simple and straightforward, um, but this, I, I loved, uh, was it Rachel who said this is like a, um, like a retreat every week? I love that idea, you know, giving you just a chance to pause and explore and reflect on where you are as a teacher. Um, I'm going to go back to our, our week here and show you one of the completed reflections. Um, th this, is, this is not an actual circle. This is a, a, a demo circle with, with demo people, but the reflection is actually something that did come uh, from one of our Success Accelerator faculty members this past, um, this past fall. Uh, and I got permission um, from um, the, the faculty member to, uh, to share this. Um, but here you can see the, the way that she's reflected um, talking about the things that she's planning in her class. And you can also see, um, you see these little kind of hashtag things. Those are the teaching practices. And over time in the Success Accelerator Circle, this becomes kind of a common language that, uh, the, that the, the faculty fellows in the circle can use with each other to talk about the things they're doing, talk about the challenges they're seeing, or the opportunities for how they want to push their, their teaching forward. Um, and so, um, so this is a, a fun way that, uh, or a, a, an element that helps to build that thinking around the evidence-based teaching practices. The last thing that I wanna show you as far as a quick guided tour is a place that um, a lot of faculty members really enjoy exploring. Um, in the Lumen Circles platform, there is a library that has a variety of different resources. Um, the richest part of this library is, is the, this tags area. So tags, that's the term that we use in the platform for these 
evidence-based teaching practices. And in this part of the library, you can come and you can see that the definitions, kind of the pedagogical purpose of the different teaching practices. And then with each one of them, you can click on the resources and it provides you a really rich set of, of curated materials about that particular teaching practice. It might be different examples. Um, it might be how-to videos or case studies of how to do it well. And then um, in these resources, there are also what we call exemplars. Um, and exemplars are examples of faculty fellows who have been through this program uh, previously and have done something or you know, done a reflection that's a great example of applying this particular teaching practice. And so we hear, um, actually, I got a few complaints uh, this year from faculty members, especially in the Success Accelerator program saying, I don't have enough time to explore all the rich stuff in that library. So fortunately, they, you still have access to the library. So you can continue to go in and, and take a look and go deeper there. Um, but this library is, is a fun resource um, for seeing what other faculty, other real faculty members are doing and, and how they're applying these kinds of things in their classes. So that's, I'm going to stop the guided tour there, um, although if there's anything else that the faculty panel would like to sh me to show, I can, I can certainly do that if there, there's other pieces um, of the platform. There's, there's more there, but, um, but I think that's enough for our conversation right now. So I'm going to stop sharing and we'll go back to the panel. Thanks, Julie, for that great tour of the Success Accelerator platform and experience. Um, I'll remind everybody on the call, if you're attending, um, feel free to join us with your questions via the chat. Um, more than happy to have your questions answered directly, or if you want to answer them on the side, we can connect you with any of our panelists as well. Um, I'm going to start with a, a question for Heather and, and maybe Sylvia, if she wants to chime in afterwards as well. Heather, you hinted at this in your kind of opening statement, but I'm really interested in how this program impacted um, what you do as a teacher and how in, in, as a result um, that, that in turn engaged or further engaged your students. Oh, you're muted, Heather. No worries. Sorry, thank no you. This is the first time that um, our department has used uh, Lumen OHM for, uh, for courses. So everyone in, everyone in the department had to learn it. Um, I jumped on this as an opportunity to try to really help my students by understanding what they were having to do more. Um, it really helped because I was struggling with what the software could do. What did it really provide students? Um, I had always thought that uh, open source material was just like an online textbook. In, this is way, way more than that. There, they have all kinds of videos that are embedded right into the links for the students. There's all kinds of opportunities for uh, uh, examples. And, as, uh, and through the circle, what I got to learn is ways to set up uh, OHM to do special things that could really help my students. Like I learned that I could open up an, a created assignment after it was due to allow students more practice. So I could leave it open. I didn't know that. I also learned that I could copy an assignment and use it as an online quiz. So uh, I created a link, copied an assignment, created a link as a review. Um, we did, it was like, um, it was like a, it, the questions would pop up, students would answer, we go over it, move on to the next one. So I used that during my class. Um, some of these ideas, I had no idea that the software could do. Uh, so I learned a lot being an, a newbie uh, to the process of just how much there really is and how rich the material it really can be. Sylvia, I'll turn over to you. Slightly different platform. I know you're using Waymaker for Spanish. Um, ways that it changed uh, what you do as an educator and in turn um, what that had impact had for your students. So uh, using the Waymaker allowed me to start with all the students having the material from the day one and not have to pay for the material. So we were all starting on the same uh, level there were not students that because they didn't have the money, they were going to fall behind in the class. And 
the success accelerator, accelerator Alison Indrunas, our facilitator, would uh, point out things that we might not know that the Waymaker could do. So we even had like a conversation going on besides the, 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 the weekly um, reflections about uh, suggestions or questions of using Waymaker. So it was like um, having a, um, several weeks long company of, of somebody that knew about how the material worked that we could ask questions and, and bring things up. And so that helped. Um, when I would go to the library and I would look at the ta tags, that would give me a, like an inventory of practices that I might not have thought and of using. So if I explore them, I could think how to better adapt my teaching to unique needs of students even though I have big numbers, I could target groups so that I could differentiate instruction, even with big numbers, but not by individual maybe, but yes, by providing a diversity of a pedag I mean, pedagogical strategies, because I'm thinking all the time of the diversity of students that not every single strategy is gonna work for every single student. And so the Waymaker uh, and the Lumen Circle uh, with the ideas of colleagues and the facilitator allowed me to find these alternative approaches for students that wouldn't necessarily thrive in the traditional initial approach. So, yeah. Great, Sylvia. And I saw um, Rachel and Sophia nodding their heads when you're talking about kind of diversity approaches. So I'm just wondering if they want to add anything in. Um, whoever wants to go first, feel free. I, I can add in because I was in the same uh, circle with Heather. So um, what Heather described is a feature of oh my had no clue existed, although uh, our facilitator told us uh, that uh, it has been there for a while, which is the polling uh, quiz. That's what I think Heather was saying. So uh, I had never used it before and I did, I know I didn't have time during the course of the success accelerator to do it because I was extremely busy starting my semester, but I am using it now as review. So my review sessions at the end of the semester are this polling quiz, which is an assignment that the students will do in uh, at home as part of their homework, but in class I use as a review for the final exam. And it's exactly that. You pose a question and you wait for them to answer and then you compare all the answers and they can view, they can see uh, the answers that other people give and they can compare and it's anonymous and it, it was really nice. One thing that was uh, for me very um, different was I'm not a research kind of person, like I don't really overthink my instruction strategies, but all of these are research-based uh, strategies, uh, the tags that Julie showed us, uh, all uh, the libraries uh, the four particular uh, circles that we are looking to, to achieve as we do instruction. And I had never approached uh, the instruction through that perspective. And some of them was differentiated instruction and adaptability and uh, contextualized things, which obviously sometimes it's really hard in math, but uh, it forced me to think of my teaching in a different uh, way that I had never thought before. And to, to see it from multiple perspectives, from the student perspective, from social perspective, do we have the means to offer what we wanna offer? Uh, especially when we are trying to, to connect with students virtually, right? And when they haven't met us in person or we don't have the opportunity to catch them on the hallway and say, hey, I missed you yesterday in class, something like that. So it, it was a very nice experience for me to see research-based uh, and evidence-based teaching practices that are already existing and I, you, I was using, but I had no idea why they existed in the way they were. Thanks, Sophia. Um, Rachel? Uh, so two things I wanna piggyback on. Like Heather, very quickly, I thought that OER uh, textbooks and, and I had no idea what courseware was. I didn't know what Waymaker was when I signed up for it. Um, in a sense and how powerful a tool it is. And that came out in the accelerator again. 
as I think Sylvia touched on, when you're sharing ideas, you're like, wow, we can do this, we can do that with this courseware that, you know, for, I, I was a total newbie with that, uh, even though I've been teaching online uh, for many, many years. Um, I also kind of, to piggyback on what Sophia said, the tags and, and you know, doing this kind of, we, we had to be very intentional. It's like, I'm very organized, okay? Um, but, but looking at the way the courseware worked and then looking at it and stopping and being intentional and reflecting on what was going on in the classroom is something that I haven't done in many, many years. Um, so it was really a wonderful experience to have that being very intentional about the lessons you were designing and then reflecting on them. Thanks all. And I'm going to shift gears a little bit and, and turn to Joe Dell. We've talked about kind of the impact on, on uh, th these panelists as educators, um, what happens in their classroom, on their students in Joe Dell. I'm just wondering, um, in terms of your own professional growth, I'm going to imagine this isn't probably the first professional development program certificate you've gone through. Um, if you could just talk about the most valuable thing you took away, you took away from this experience in terms of professional growth, that would be great. Sure. Um, I think with this, I mean, our department is great. Um, I can go to any faculty member and say, hey, do you have an activity for? Um, and I would just go ahead and adopt that activity. Um, certainly, you know, our new normal um, forced me really to look at, okay, what really can you do? And, and what's, a, what's a better way perhaps to connect with the students when you're not face to face? And now uh, through uh, the um, Waymaker and through taking the, the um, Lumen Circles, I found that I not only um, know what I'm doing, I know why I'm doing it. And to me, that was the most important thing that I knew why I was doing it. And while some things didn't work, um, you know, for, for, and for whatever reason it was, you know, worked for three groups, it didn't work for one group. Um, but I, we still, in one case, it was actually better <laughs> when it didn't work because that was used as a learning experience. Um, but it, it was, it was, I think the ability of me to, um, to be able to interact and react and still, um, utilize my assessment so that, okay, it, it was okay that it didn't work. Let's, let's talk about some things. And what did you learn from this experience? And through that, the connections were made with the students, getting them to talk to me with each other, where normally that in a face-to-face -face classroom experience, that would be, you know, just common. But, it, you know, we have to work a little bit harder. And I think it helped me during this time to, to give me the confidence to try new things and um, also to, you know, to... Um, to not be afraid, I think, to, to try those things. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, I, I even go back now to the um, Patricia Cross Academy, um, to those videos. The, there were three to four minutes, and sometimes I'll go back through them and say, okay, what else, you know, is there another idea or something that I can incorporate? So the, the tools that are avail valuable, um, and then the, you know, that those are just um, you know, seeing what other uh, faculty members did as well. Great. Thanks, Jodell. I'm going to stick with you for, for an, another minute or so. You mentioned a couple of things that I think will be a nice segue. Um, how you and Monroe in, in your department, you, you kind of just share naturally. You have great assignments. You talk with one another. You share um, with your colleagues and also how, you know, you now have confidence to try new things. So if, if we can imagine all the uh, attendees on this panel as your colleagues and, and who are interested in trying something new, um, the Success Accelerator, you know, what advice would you give to those colleagues um, for participating in this program? So what should they come kind of ready to do or ready to experience? Um, I think that they will be pleasantly surprised. Um, I, I, you know, we share all the time um, and I've talked about my experience um, and I know a few of us use uh, Waymaker, um, but really there's nothing to lose, only everything to gain. Um, that yes, it might take a half an hour, 45 minutes, even an hour. I found that I took longer um, every week because I really enjoyed, you know, seeing what everybody else was doing. And, um, you know, it, it, was, it was great because I had an opportunity 
to um, say, here's what I'm going to do. And then the next time to report back that to everybody to say, here's how we did, you know, here's what happened and to get feedback that way. So I think the engagement with your peers and the interaction is, is you can't put a price on that. That's really invaluable as well. Great. Thanks for that. Um, Rachel, I'm going to shift back to you um, and, and then to Sophia, um, knowing your experiences in the classroom. And just if you could talk a little bit about, you know, what surprised you about the, this experience? You mentioned that you didn't know anything about course reader, didn't really know anything about Waymaker. Um, really, outside of, of that, what surprised you about this experience? Well, I guess what really surprised me because I've done a lot of, uh, you know, online kind of, of things through various, through Sloan and, and different things. It's what surprised me was that I actually enjoyed the experience. Um, and I would say if anyone is like on the fence about doing this, I think particularly moving in again to another semester of very unsettled, you know, hybrid courses, online shifting modalities, this becomes a place, and this was a crazy semester in the fall, as we all know. I was in the classroom one day a week. So um, everyone else in my learning circle was completely online. So I would come in and say, okay, I, I have this classroom, this huge lecture center, everyone's six feet apart. We can't do group work. You know, I mean, group work is totally different. So this was like the one place I could go and kind of like during those first few weeks of, of, of the semester. So I would say I was really surprised about just how valuable that sense of community was, particularly so in light of COVID. So I, it was a pleasant surprise. Um, it, it really felt like I was doing something meaningful. Great. Thanks, Rachel. And Sylvia, there's a message from Maribel in, in the chat from Buffalo State, who has also adopted a Spanish one way maker, and, and she's certainly interested in connecting with her other faculty. Um, just wondering if you would uh, encourage her to join uh, the Success Accelerator experience um, as, a, as a Spanish faculty member. Uh, I would definitely uh, encourage uh, Maribel to join it. Um, and I will send her my email if she wants to connect later. Um, I think that the one, one thing that I found very valuable, uh, not only in terms of Spanish and Waymaker, but it is that other professional development experiences tend to be like a long workshop one day, and then it stops. But this coming back every week creates a different dynamic and a different way of learning, because you, you have time to reflect and, and go deeper and deeper and deeper. So that is something that is also very effective, I think, and valuable. Great, and thanks for the offer of help for, to Maribel. Mm -hmm. I know we're running up against time, so I want to turn it back over to oh. Julie. Uh, oh, sorry, to Mike, I, yeah. I wanted to just jump in. Yeah. Um, and I'm grabbing the, uh, yeah. gra grabbing the mic from you. So um, uh, one, one note to Maribel, we, we actually have, a, there's um, some faculty members who are teaching Waymaker uh, Spanish in Maryland who are looking very seriously at, uh, at the Success Accelerator program for spring. And if we have enough faculty members from a single discipline, we can do a dedicated uh, circle for, you know, for Spanish faculty members, for example. And so um, I can reach out to you and we can get you, definitely get you connected with Sylvia, but we'd love to include you and any other colleagues that might be interested in, in an opportunity like that. I think that could be really valuable and we'd love to see how that, um, how that works, so. Um, what um, a couple of other things that I, I realized I forgot to share in my uh, guided tour um, are just a couple of the nuts and bolts that that have, we've alluded to, and I actually have another slide that I will just put up there. Um, so uh, I, I wanted to note that um, the Success Accelerator experience is uh, it's a it's going to be a six week program um, in the spring. This past uh, fall, it was five weeks. We extended it to six weeks to give just a little bit more time. Um, and really, it's the, the first week is kind of an orientation. The final week is a conclusion. And then in the middle weeks are when you get to explore these different dimensions of the evidence-based teaching framework and go through these cycles of, of exploration and reflection and providing feedback. 
Um, we designed the program to take really just one to two hours per week. Um, in the feedback surveys, we found that the math people take closer to one hour per week and the non-math people take closer to two hours per week. Um, so I don't think any, any of the math people are really surprised at that. Um, and, and a lot of the, you know, the time and the richness really is in that, in that community interaction. Um, and so, um, so with that, that's a little bit of the nuts and bolts. The, the other thing is that Success Accelerator is a two-term program. And so the first term you go through this six-week kind of courseware evidence-based teaching practice uh, framework. Um, and then the second term, you can choose to continue that experience in another Success Accelerator circle. Or if you want to, you have the option to choose one of our nine-week um, professional development uh, experiences. It's the same type of community of practice. You may not be with other people that are using the same courseware, but you're with other people that are wanting to grow in, in specific directions. So growing further and deeper in how you teach online or um, teaching uh, with an inclusive classroom um, or, you know, using active learning strategies. Um, or again, they're, they're actually offering one also that is kind of going deeper into the reflection and practice that is still focused on the courseware and evidence-based teaching practices. So, um, so it really becomes this rich uh, experience where you get, you get to learn and go deeper in the tools that you're using. And then you also have these opportunities to go in a second term and, and explore further and grow professionally in, in the directions that you're interested in, in going further. Um, so with that, um, that was sort of the nuts and bolts. Um, we, we will uh, put in the chat the place for people to sign up. We actually, um, there is a, there's a website and I can put this URL in. If you're interested in applying for the program, um, this website has some additional information. And then at the bottom, there's a really short application form. Um, and so for, for anyone that's interested and hasn't um, had the opportunity to apply or to sign up yet, um, you can do that. And if you've got questions, um, you, know, you can add them in here as well and, and we can get back to you and, and share more information. Um, so with that, uh, we can, I guess if there's any burning questions, we can take them or we can go ahead and wrap up. So Mike, I'll let you take things from here. All right, not seeing any questions in the chat. I did put the link um, for that interest form into the chat. Um, so feel free to grab that link and we'll share that out with the recording as well. I just wanna thank Sophia, Heather, Jodell, Rachel, and Sylvia again for joining us and sharing their experiences as educators and educators who participated in Success Accelerator. And certainly hope to have uh, many of you who are on this call um, as panelists in the spring after you complete Success Accelerator um, of your own. Um, like we said, we'll be sharing out the recording um, and, and thanks again everyone for attending today. I want to interrupt you and tell you that Crystal in the Q&A has said that she's interested to join the circle. She teaches Spanish at SUNY IRI. So you may want to, awesome. yeah. Great, we may have a Spanish circle for spring. There we go, Spanish. <laughs> Maybe I should join, no. <laughs> okay, thank you everybody.